Mr. Eugene H. Krabs is a parsimonious, materialistic, cheap, and fraudulent bikini bottom crab who has an obsession with money. Directors and cast members say that Eugene Krabs is the protagonist of the SpongeBob SquarePants franchise. I say he is an anti-heroic criminal antagonist who has committed multiple crimes that would get him jailed in real life. In this video on the Master Rainy channel, I will talk about 10 logical reasons to support why Mr. Krabs should be incarcerated. Now I have previously done videos about TV show characters on the Master Rainy channel. Check out the 13th video and the 17th video if you were confused of what I've just said. The 13th video about Sheldon Cooper being stubborn. The 17th about Sheldon Cooper being rude. Links are in the description. Now let's focus on the reasons why the Nickelodeon character, Mr. Krabs, should be locked up. Number 10. Breaking and Entering. In the episode, Midlife Crustacean, Mr. Krabs goes through a midlife crisis. He intentionally breaks into someone's house by going through an open window. He steals a pair of underwear out of a drawer. Then it turns out that he broke into his own mother's house. Instead of pressing charges for the burglary, his mom grounds him and sends him up to his room for the rest of the night. Doing that shit can and will lead you up to a year in jail. Number 9. Grave Robbing In the episode, One Crab's Trash, Mr. Crab sells antiques. SpongeBob buys a number one soda novelty drink hat. Four customers randomly show up to buy that product for such a high price. But one of the customers randomly arrive at Mr. Crab's antique shop betting $1 million for, for that product. Mr. Krabs demanded the hat back so he could sell it to another customer for a million dollars. But Spongebob refused to give it back to him. At night, Spongebob returns the hat to its original owner in the graveyard. Mr. Krabs goes there and defiles a grave and snatches the hat right off that owner's corpse. Mr. Krabs ended up in an all-night battle with the dead. Then returned to the four customers to try and get a million dollars. But he failed to get that hat sold for a million dollars. The penalty ranges in between a class B felony to a class C misdemeanor. Mr. Krabs could face three months to 20 years in prison, fined $500 to $15,000, or both. Number 8. Aggravated Assault In the episode, The Two Faces of Squidward, Spongebob inadvertently hits Squidward's face with the door, causing him to need medical attention. Squidward ends up in the hospital for two weeks, then his face began to look handsome after treatment. Squidward's new appearance began attracting people, and he received attention. When he went to the Krusty Krab with that handsome face, there were numerous customers on Krusty Krab property. Mr. Krabs was happy about having that many people come to his restaurant, but it's because of Squidward's appearance. It took a lot of hits on his face to return it to normal. Then all the customers left. Mr. Krabs literally slams the door on Squidward's face on purpose repeatedly to try and make him look handsome again, but only to get the customers back. Aggravated assault is a serious felony that results in 10 to 20 years in prison. Number 7. Counterfeiting In the episode, The Krabby Chronicle, Mr. Krabs gets his money confiscated from the angry mob because of a news article that tells the truth. After all these lies written on the older news articles, Mr. Krabs inserts a dollar bill in the printing press and prints numerous copies of fake dollars. The U.S. Bureau of Engraving and Printing is what makes the legal U.S. currency. This was also discovered in the episode, One Course Meal. Mr. Krabs pays Spongebob's income with wacky bucks. His own business currency. This is not equal to this. Counterfeiting is a serious felony that'll lead to a minimum of 20 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. Number 6. Animal Cruelty 
in the episode, Jellyfish Hunter. Mr. Krabs orders SpongeBob to catch all the jellyfish out of jellyfish fields because of how much the customers love the jelly patties. Mr. Krabs runs a secret sweatshop killing hundreds or thousands of jellyfish by tickling, squeezing, stretching, and juicing them, causing them to emit all of their jelly. Good thing that SpongeBob stopped him from killing the jellyfish, all thanks to the blue jellyfish named No Name and later named Friend, otherwise they would have been hunted down to extinction. This wasn't the only time he was cruel to animals. He was also cruel to SpongeBob's pet snail Gary in the episode The Scent of Money. Gary's shell was magnetic to coins. Mr. Krabs uses Gary as a money finder. It eventually tires him out, but Mr. Krabs didn't give a shit. So he continued searching for money with the magnetic shell. Gary then collects all the coins from the arcade, causing a coin tsunami, and it led to Mr. Krabs in the hospital being billed $2,000. Unfortunately, the punishment isn't very severe. Mr. Krabs could face up to a year in jail, or a fine of $1,000, of course. Since Mr. Krabs is a parsimonious cheapskate, he'd take the jail sentence. Number 5 food poisoning. In the episode, Patty Hype, Mr. Krabs sells pretty patties to 46,853 customers. The patties turn the customer's skins and tongues into different color. Of course, one of the tongues glue in the dark. Instead of getting arrested, he got chased by an angry mob. This wasn't the only time that he has poisoned his customers. This also happened in the episode, the Krusty Sponge. Mr. Krabs sells spongy patties to try and make money off of SpongeBob's popularity. The spongy patties turn the customers spongy and sicken them. This is one of the reasons why the authorities should permanently shut down the Krusty Krab. Number 4. Selling His Own Workers In the episode, Born again crabs. Mr. Krabs sells SpongeBob to the Flying Dutchman for 62 cents. The Flying Dutchman takes SpongeBob to Davy Jones's locker. This is why no one should work for that asshole. How could you trade SpongeBob for 62 cents? That'd be my question to him if he were a real life character doing that. Number three, theft. In the episode, Life of Crime, Spongebob and Patrick found out that Mr. Krabs stole the following items. Like that barrel. It says, property of Salty Sea Farms. This towel from the sizzling spring sauna. And well, this bikini that's... bell phone. And Sandy's hedge clippers. And Plankton's lawnmower. It... Even Mrs. Puff's hair curlers. Mr. Krabs then lies about the hair curlers being a gift and about borrowing these things. This also happened in the episode Patty Caper. Mr. Krabs steals the Krabby Patty secret formula and tries to frame SpongeBob. He does get arrested in the episode and ends up being forced to watch the customers get their Krabby Patties for free. free Since he is against free food. Number two, attempted murder. In the episode, Nasty Patty, a health inspector visits the Krusty Krab, but Mr. Krabs believed that it was an imposter. Mr. Krabs convinces SpongeBob to serve him a disgusting Krabby Patty. The two thought that the health inspector ate the Krabby Patty, but a fly went into his mouth and he choked on it. They laugh at him choking on that fly while thinking that he ate the Nasty Patty. When they thought that the health inspector was dead, they realized it was a real health inspector. Mr. Krabs attempts to hide the health inspector's body instead of calling an ambulance. The health inspector wakes up in a couple scenes from unconsciousness, but frankly, he was alive and the Krusty Krab passed the inspection. If anything were to happen like that in real life, Mr. Krabs would face a life sentence for taking someone's life. And the moment you've been waiting for, I will now veil my top pick. Hey, what's this? It's a text message from the Project Commission. 
three dishonorable mentions. Dishonorable mention number one, public nudity. In the algae is always green. Mr. Krabs and Plankton switch lives. Mr. Krabs then enters the Krusty Krab naked, and then SpongeBob shoots at Krabs with clothes out of a can, and it eventually shoots a bra on him for public nudity. Dishonorable mention number two, death threatening. In Wet Painters, Mr. Krabs gives SpongeBob and Patrick a secret assignment by making them paint the walls in his house without getting any paint on anything but the walls because it's permanent paint. Mr. Krabs threatened to cut off their butts if they made one simple mistake, which they did anyway after making two giant paint bubbles that collided into one giant paint bubble that exploded by getting a little stain on Mr. Krabs' first dollar. SpongeBob then wipes his tie on the dollar to try to get the paint off, but the paint spreads everywhere on the dollar and covers up the whole dollar. Dishonorable mention number three. Pickpocketing. In the episode Sailor Mouth, Mr. Krabs says all 13 bad words. SpongeBob and Patrick rat him out to his mother, and after his mother faints, here's what he did. Mr. Krabs is seen taking a coin out of his mom's pocket and putting it in his pocket. Therefore, he stole change from his mom. And now to avail my top pick... Here's the moment you all been waiting for. Number one, violating labor laws. Mr. Krabs is shown committing labor crimes in multiple episodes. In the episode, Fear of a Krabby Patty, he is shown overworking his employees. He sets the business hours for 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. And then Mr. Krabs discovers that the chum bucket was open for 23 hours then he subsequently opens the Krusty Krab for 24 hours, forcing SpongeBob and Squidward to work 24-hour shifts for 43 consecutive days without a single break. Squidward gets exhausted severely, but SpongeBob remains unaffected until being ordered 10,000 Krabby Patties, but that fails because SpongeBob becomes exhausted and begins hallucinating because of nonstop work for 43 days. Yeah, that was the result. Not only does he overwork his employees, but he underpays them too. In the episode, Bummer Vacation, Mr. Krabs holds a dime in his hand. SpongeBob sees a dime and says it's more than he makes a year. Mr. Krabs makes his employees work extra hours without overtime. The Krusty Krab is literally like a sweatshop. Mr. Krabs, can I have a raise? No. And yet, Mr. Krabs refuses to give raises after paying his employees very little money. So he's like putting his employees in extreme, if not exceptional, poverty. But even worse, in the episode Big Pink Loser... It was sure nice of Mr. Krabs to give me a job. And at $50 an hour, too. When I started working here, I had to pay Mr. Krabs $100 an hour. It has been proven that Mr. Krabs makes Spongebob and Squidward pay him for every use of service. This wasn't the only time he's done that. In the episode, Squid on Strike, Squidward gets charged a bill from Mr. Krabs for the most bullshit reasons. Like standing at a cash register, breathing, and existing. One dollar for breathing, five dollars for talking, ten dollars for standing, two dollars for existing, two dollars for lollygagging, and one dollar for chewing. That bill that Squidward has charged totals up to twenty-one dollars. It caused Squidward to get himself and Spongebob on strike in the episode. Of course, something like that is no excuse to raise profits. So this pretty much supports why you should never work at the Krusty Krab, even for those that are looking for a job in the fast food industry. Another reason why the authorities should shut down the Krusty Krab permanently. Got any more reasons why Mr. Krab should be arrested? Let me know in the comments if you thought of any unmentioned reasons. Later bitches, stay tuned for the 30 second video on the Master Rainy channel that will eventually be released on screen. Remember to avoid the Krusty Krab because the sole proprietor is a financial fraudster, an employment and entrepreneurship version of Bernie Madoff, something that these two have in common, they are financial fraudsters. Have a good one.